Eric, I've been trying to get a job as a CISO and I haven't been successful. And they go, I'm confused because you're telling us there's a lot of CISO jobs. I hear that there's a lot of CISO jobs. SEC is requiring that any publicly traded company has a CISO, yet I'm not able to accomplish. So what is going on? What do I need to do differently? Welcome to Life of a CISO. I'm Dr. Eric Cole, your host, and we'll be taking you on a journey each week on what it takes to be a CISO and what are solutions that you can implement today if you are currently a Chief Information Security Officer or if you want to be one in the future. This is Life of a CISO. Welcome, 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 welcome. You know what time it is, my friends. Woo! It's time for Life of a CISO with yours truly, Dr. E is in the house. What I want to talk about on this episode is becoming a CISO because I'm getting more and more people, more and more clients that are, Eric, I've been trying to get a job as a CISO and I haven't been successful. And they go, I'm confused because you're telling us there's a lot of CISO jobs. I hear that there's a lot of CISO jobs. SEC is requiring that any publicly traded company has a CISO, yet I'm not able to accomplish. So what is going on? What do I need to do differently in order to become a CISO? Now, just so we're clear, of course, this is life of a CISO, and I'm focused on getting your job as a CISO. However, if you're an existing CISO, this will apply to why can't I get promoted? Because I get that a lot going, Eric, I'm a CISO and I'm just not very effective or I'm not getting through the executives. And this is what I hear all the time. Eric, I was so excited to get this job and I have the title of Chief Information Security Officer. Woo, woo, woo. But I'm really a security engineer. I'm not doing CISO work. They gave me the title to check a box. They gave me a title because they needed a CISO. But I'm not doing it as a CISO. I'm not viewed as a CISO. I don't brief the executives. I don't sit in the executive wing. How can I become a real CISO? So this will apply to you. You're a security engineer. And you want to get promoted. Same thing. Same thing. If you want to get into cybersecurity, and you can. I hear that all the time going, Eric. You're telling me these all these cybersecurity jobs. All these data centers are opening up in Ashburn. There's all this work for security operations center, yet I can't seem to get a job. What is going on? This works for you too. So this works for everybody, even though the theme, I'm going to use CISO as the example, anybody can apply these principles, and it's the same thing we see over and over again. So let's start. Here is the current reality. If you are not where you need to be, if you're not where you want to be, if you're not where you should be, it's one simple thing. You're focused on the wrong area. It is really that simple. Because the reality is this. If you truly believed that you were CISO material, if you truly honestly believe that you are a world-class CISO, you would be it. So the fact that you're not a CISO and you've been trying for years to get a CISO job and you haven't been able to means you are focused on not being a CISO. You are focused on why you are not able to do that job because the reality is simple. If you truly were focused and believed that you were a CISO, you'd be a CISO, which means the current way you are thinking, your current beliefs and your current stories are not allowing you to become who you want to be. So you can get all the skill sets you want, you can do all those things, but unless we can change your mindset, unless we can change your story of what you're focused on, we're not going to be able to allow you to accomplish what you want. And the simple example is, have you ever seen pictures where there's this long, road. It's a long, wide open road. 
and every hundred feet is a telephone pole. And somebody at night was driving too fast, lost control of the car, and hit a telephone pole. And you're sitting there going, seriously? There's one telephone pole every hundred feet. That means there's a hundred feet of open areas that you could have swerved off and just went into a field. How in the world were you able to do that? I mean, that, that takes skill, right? That, that takes skill, baby, to hit that telephone pole. And the reason is, that's what they were focused on. If you're going fast down a road and you start going out of control, you're like, I don't want to hit the telephone pole. I don't want to hit the telephone pole. Here's the reality, my friends. Our minds don't process negatives. So all we hear is telephone pole, telephone pole, telephone pole. That's all your mind's hearing. And your mind is like a magic genie. It will wish you your commands because it doesn't want to make you a liar. Your mind is a goal-achieving machine. So if you keep saying telephone pole, telephone pole, it goes, I gotta, I can't make this person a liar. If we don't hit that telephone pole, then we failed. So I will make sure we do what you want and hit the telephone pole. Even though that wasn't your intent, that's what happens in your mind. And that's why you see this occur over and over again where people consistently hit telephone poles. If you've ever done race car driving, I, I love race cars. I love going fast. I've taken some lessons. If you've ever taken a lesson, the first thing they do is they take you out with the professional driver and they drive. And they show you what this car is capable of. They show you how to get around the track. And then it's your turn to drive. And you're driving, and here's the reality. When you're going around a racetrack where there's other cars going 120 plus miles an hour, you are going to lose control. Oil leaks out, gas, slick, tire. I mean, the reality is you are going to lose control at some point. So the skill is, how do you gain back control? Simple, simple. I get in the car, race car driver goes, Eric, when you start spinning out of control, all you need to do is look at where you want to go. If you look at where you want to go, your body will naturally steer in and you have a good chance of getting back on the track. Great. So you get in this special car that they have a little box, and at certain points they hit one of the buttons, and it drops the tire on that corner, and you spin in that direction. And you know they're going to do this, so you're ready. So you start driving the car, and you're like, hit the butt, man. Hit the button. And of course they don't. And then you, you start talking, you forget about the button, and of course, that's when they hit it. Now, simple. The car starts spinning. What do you have to do? Look in the direction of the track. That's it. Nice and easy. What does everyone do, including me? We look at the wall. Because we want to die. Right? Because we want to see ourselves spot. Now, the reality is, when you start spinning, if you look at the wall, you're going to hit the wall. Guaranteed. Guarantee. So, of course, he takes my head, and he turns it to the track, and we steer. Now, a couple things. If I'm looking at the track, does it instantly happen? No. There's a delay factor. So, this is where trust comes in. And this is what I have to build with my clients. Because I tell them, you're focused that you're not CISO material. You're focused that you can't become a CISO. So I need you to focus on being a CISO. I need you to focus on the track and not the wall. But the problem is when you focus on the track and not the wall, you don't instantly get a job. The car doesn't instantly start spinning. So that delay factor is where people sometimes doubt and don't believe it works. So you need to have trust. Second, if you're looking at the track, is it a guarantee that you'll get back on the track? No, you could still hit the wall. So what happens then is sometimes they're doing what I say, 
and they apply for a few jobs and they don't get it. So then they go in and say, this doesn't work. No, it works, just not all the time. You have to be consistent. So the two things here, if you want to become a CISO, if you want to get promoted, if you want to get into cybersecurity, two things. You must trust and you must be consistent knowing it could take time. Because the reality is, if you're focused on the wall, you hit the wall. If you continuously say, I am not CISO material, I will guarantee you won't get a job as a CISO. If you look at the track, sometimes you'll hit the wall, but there will be times where you do get back on track, but there's a delay. So if you convince yourself you are CISO material, you might not get the first or second job, but you eventually will. Guarantee at some point you will get back on the track and the recovery will work. So first thing you need to do is change your story. Change your mindset and trust and be consistent that it might take some time, but it'll eventually work. And this is the craziest thing because all of my one-on-one -on -one and grouping group clients, they come to me because they think they need CISO skills. They think they're not getting hired because they don't have skills. Nothing to do with the skills. It's 100% the story you're telling yourself. I can guarantee, 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 and there's no guarantees. My attorneys don't let me guarantee, so there's guarantee with no guarantee. But I can guarantee with no guarantee. If you want something and you're trying to get something or become something and you haven't been able to for a year, it has nothing to do with your skill set and it has everything to do with your mindset guarantee with no guarantee. So when people tell me, Eric, I've been trying to get a job for a year, two years, three years, and I'm not able to, I know what the problem is. Now here's the issue. Me knowing the problem and me just telling you the problem isn't gonna help anything because you're not gonna blame me. So. The goal of coaching is I need to get you to see the problem and convince yourself that it's a problem. So what I do with everyone is when we first start off our coaching engagement, I go, tell me about yourself. Tell me about your background. Tell me what you want. And I just need to get them talking because within four to five minutes, I will be able to see what the problem is. Most of the time, most of the time, when I talk to somebody within a minute or two, they say something like, Eric, I'm a really good security engineer. I know technical. I just don't think I'm good at strategy. And I don't think I'm system material. I just don't think somebody is going to hire me as a CISO. Boom. That's the story. That's the problem. That's your wall. That's your telephone pole that you keep looking at. And guess what? You're going to hit it every time. So let me just ask you a question. If you are sitting there and you are saying, I'm not CISO material. I'm not CISO material. No one's going to hire me as a CISO. What do you think you're going to do when you put together your CV? You're going to create it under your not system material. You're gonna focus on all your technical skills and technical knowledge, and it's not gonna be a proper CV, so you're never, ever gonna get interviews. And then, if a miracle of the heavens happen, and you actually get an interview with your, not, with your technical non-CISO CV, you're walking into the interview. They're not gonna hire. I'm not system material, I'm not system material, they're not gonna, how effective do you think that's really going to be? It's not. So of course, you're not gonna get a call back. Of course, you're not gonna get the job. So everybody focuses on CV and interview skills. They try to improve that. But the reality is, if you're focused on the wall, you're gonna hit the wall every time. So we got to change your mindset. Now you could 
Hire me as a coach. I'd love to work with you. I'll get through this stuff so quick. I'm a master at it. I've been doing it for so long. I can see the patterns. I know how to change your story. I know how to convince you. I know how you to look at the track super quick, super fast. But I'm here to help. So uh, this is not a pitch. Hopefully you feel that my podcasts are giving you valuable information. So what you can do, just record yourself. Just go in and set a recording and talk for five minutes about who you are, what you've done, where you're going, and what you want to accomplish. Five plus minutes. 10 is better, 12 is better, but at least five minutes. Just talk. And here's the thing. Don't think about it. Don't go, wait a second, I don't want to say what Eric said. No, no, no. You're going to mess yourself up. Pretend you didn't listen to any of this. Pretend me and you are meeting for the first time, and I say, talk to me, walk with me, tell me your plans. Tell me your story. Tell me what's going on. And just start talking. Record it. Then go back and listen. Listen as if a friend is listening, or even have a friend listen to it. And say, tell me patterns or things you're hearing. And you will hear it. You will hear it. It's something along the lines that you don't believe you're capable of getting the job. I don't have enough experience. Great. I'm not system material. I don't think strategic enough. I don't understand business. I don't understand numbers. So, the story will come out. And guess what? If you can't find it the first time, repeat the exercise. Keep recording you telling yourself about your life, your beliefs, what you think and where you're currently at. And after two or three times, you will hear that story. Then what you need to do is convince yourself that's total garbage. Convince yourself this is not true. This is not true. So a couple of ways. If you go, Eric, I don't have enough experience to become a CISO. No one's going to hire me because I don't have enough experience. Research and find other CISOs that have less experience than you that got a job. Hmm. You said you don't have enough experience, but you've been doing cyber for six years, and I can find five different people on LinkedIn that are CISOs that were security engineers for three years. Hmm. Maybe that story is a lie. Maybe it's not true. And you keep going through and proving to yourself it's not true. Now, in a slim case, slim chance, maybe it is. Maybe you only have six months as a security engineer. Six months as a security engineer with no other technical background experience or business or any other experience, yet you're probably going to be a little hard. That, that's probably true. But then what you do is bound it. I currently don't have enough experience, but in two years I will. So what do I need to learn over the next two years? So in two years, I will have the proper experience. So now, even if for some slight reason you believe it's true, you have a game plan. You have a way to get to the truth. I know you've heard it many times, but it's worth repeating because it's a great exercise. One of the things I hear the most, the most, the most, I'm not so so material. So my next question is great. What is CISO material? What is CISO material? And I always love when I ask that question, what is CISO material? They're like, I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. You just told me you're not CISO material. So how do you know you're not if you don't know what it is? Sometimes that right there blows the, the BS. Because they're like, yeah, you're right. System material is just a made-up, fictitious unicorn that really doesn't exist. So I was just limiting myself, and I really am. Sometimes it's that easy. Most of the time, we have to do a little more work. So most of the time, after I push and prod and say, tell me what is CISO material, they'll start to tell me. And we'll write it down. Last time I did this, person 23 items. Great. So you're telling me that these 23 items is what a CISO must have. Now, here, here's a little secret, my friends. I don't care whether it's true or not. 
most of the time it's not true. You don't actually need those skills. But if that's what you believe, I'm working in your belief system. My goal is not to blow your mind up. It's to align you. So if you believe that's what's needed, let's go with it. Whether it's true or not, I don't care. I just want to change your story. Then I ask another question. Do you need all 23 of these? Like, like do you have to have every single one? If you're missing one, you're not so so? Oh, no. Need 17. Great. So if you have 17 out of 23, you're good. Great. Now you take a yellow highlighter. So let's go through these. Do you have this? Yep. Do you have this? Yep. Do you have this? Now here's the part. If it says brief executives, you only have to have done it once. It doesn't have to be your primary job. So they're going to go, yeah, I don't have that. I'm like, what do you mean? You told me two years ago that you briefed the executives. Yeah, but that was only once two years ago. Your list doesn't say 20 times. It says brief the executives. True or not true? Have you briefed executives in your lifetime? Yes, we highlight it. Here's what people tend to do. They focus on what they do a majority of the time and they downplay the minority. But here's the reality. If you're not a CISO, you haven't done CISO primarily. 70% of your job was security technical engineering. Probably only 20 or 30% was CISO, but the reality is you still have it. It just wasn't your primary focus. So if you briefed executives once, you check that box. Don't talk yourself out of it. So we highlight 99% of the time, they'll have 18 or 19. And they go, hmm, very interesting. You told me you're not CISO material, but you said CISO material is 17 and you have 19. What do you think? And they're like, hmm, maybe I am. Maybe I just am. And it takes these iterations, but once you believe, once you believe that you are what you want, everything will shift. You stop focusing on the wall, which guarantees you will hit the wall. And you start focusing on the track, which means at some point you will get back on track. It might not be the first or the second, but you will. Everyone I do this with, when the shift happens, guarantee, no guarantee, they always get what they want within six to seven months. It's the craziest, craziest things. But it's not just because of that. We have to do something else. We have to do something else, and that's this. Once you shifted from not CISO to CISO, once you believe you are absolutely a CISO, we now have to rewrite your CV. Because your CV was written by somebody who didn't believe. Somebody who had no faith in who you are and zero confidence you could be a CISO wrote that CV. So it's garbage. Now here's the mistake. Most people go in and try to rework their existing CV. Well, if you got poop and you try to rework it, it's still gonna stink. So what I'll do is I'll tell them start from scratch. Write a brand new CV from scratch from the mindset you are a CISO. And here's the wildest thing. They write this new CV, and I compare them. And you would think they were two different people. There's very little similarity because you shifted. Because here's the reality. When most people write a CV where you don't believe you're CISO, you write it based on what you've done 80% of the time. And if what you've done as a security engineer your resume or CV is going to scream, I'm a security engineer, and they're not going to hire you. But here's the reality. If you've presented to the board of directors once in 20 years, even if it was five years ago, can you put on your CV, you briefed the board? Yeah, it's not lying. You did. You didn't say 20 times. You didn't say it was recent, but you actually did. So you honestly can put in, you brief the board. Have you ever met with your CEO to discuss strategic integration of cyber into the business? Oh yeah, seven years ago. Great, put it on there. You did it. What you want to do, because you haven't been a CISO before, 
and your primary job has been security engineer, you need to focus on the 20% that's not your job. 20% of strategy, 20%, we've all done CISO stuff. We just haven't done a lot. But the reality is if you've done it once, you can put it on your CV. It is not lying. Now, if you're asked, you, you tell them what it was once. But you need to make your CV scream because here's the reality. Your CV is used for one thing and one thing only. Should we interview this person? Once you get an interview, nobody cares about the CV. Nobody ever hires you based on the CV. But here's what I will tell you is true because I work with a lot of HR. They will exclude you because of your CV. Companies are very gun shy about CISOs because they need a chief officer. They need somebody who will integrate with the executive team. And the problem is most of the CISOs they've hired were security engineers that were pretending to be a CISO and weren't, and they couldn't talk business and they couldn't communicate. So they have this ineffective CISO that can't give them what they need and they get frustrated and mad. So now executives are telling HR, find me a CISO that's not a security engineer. Find me a CISO that is not super tactical. Find me a CISO that can speak business and we can talk to. And they can show up to the boardroom and not embarrass me. That's what I want. So what do you think HR is looking for? Any indication that you're a security engineer to throw your CV out. When they look at a CV, they're not looking to hire you, they're looking to exclude you. So if you even have one phrase that screams technical, you're done. Biggest mistake I see with CVs of people that want to become CISOs, they have their name, their address, the mission statement, and then right up top, because they're so proud, they have technical skills and certification. And they list all their technical skills. Configured firewall, set up SIM, this technical forensic investigator certification. And I'm like, you're done. They're not even going to get to your experience because in the beginning, you are like, I am a security engineer and I am proud of it. Get that stuff off your CV. You are not a security engineer anymore. You have made a decision that you are a CISO. You know you're a CISO. You believe you're a CISO. You're a CISO. So from this day forward, act like a CISO. Present yourself as a CISO. Have your CV scream CISO. So redo it. Get rid of all that technical garbage. Then you now start applying to jobs. And what you'll notice is you're going to start getting a lot more interviews. You start getting a lot more callbacks. And then the final piece, the interview. Show up as a CISO. You are no longer a security engineer. Don't fall back in the bad habits. Don't talk techie. If you want to ace the interview, it's easy. Research the company. Find out their revenue and profit. Even private companies, they have that out on the internet. You can find it. And find out their growth. And I'll give you the biggest secret on the planet. I should charge you so you understand the value of it, but I won't. I'll give it to you for free. Within the first five minutes of the interview, no matter what they ask you, you fit in something about the company, revenue growth. So Dr. Cole, tell us how you would handle this situation. Well, first, I would take into account the size of the company and the industry you're in. I know you've currently at 300 million with 30% profit margins and you've increased by 30% year over year. So we would want to make sure that we look at how we can grow the revenue and profitability of the organization by doing blank. You do that, you fit in that you can speak business, you know the numbers, you know their profitability, you know the company, you know how they've grown. Very few people do that. And once again, no guarantee, guarantee of no guarantee, you'll get the job. So if you want to become a CISO, you got to change your focus. You got to change your story and you got to believe. 100% all in, ride or die on you, you are a CISO. Until you have that conviction with zero doubt, might as well not apply for jobs.
Not going to happen. Once you have the conviction, redo your CV. Don't rework it. Start from scratch. Write a brand new CV. Focus on the 15 to 20% of strategic work you've done, not the 80% security engineering. Write a CISO CV that is all technical language removed. Then when you go for the interviews, talk business. Talk about revenue. Talk about profitability. Talk about P&L. Talk business throughout and don't talk any techie. Show them you are who you believe you are. You're a world-class CISO. And like I said, this works if you're currently CISO and want to get promoted, security engineer, anything else, same strategies. You have to believe who you are. Your CV has to be aligned. And when you show up for the interview, you must have that conviction that you are who you say you are. And if you do that, my friends, your life will change. Life will never be the same because you will start achieving your goals when your stories are aligned with the truth of what you want and then everything you do falls into line. Have an amazing week. We'll see you next week.